So today I want to review the Panasonic G9. I've had this camera for several months now. Um, I didn't get it as soon as it came out uh, because like a lot of other people, uh, I wasn't sure if that camera or if this camera uh, was going to be all that good. I think this camera is one of the best all around packages you can get in any camera that's out today. So I'm going to go through my personal pros and cons uh, about this camera. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of go more in depth uh, with some of those cons uh, so that you can understand if this is a good option for you or not. I think this camera is one of the most slept on cameras. Uh, I agree with uh, Ted Forbes from The Art of Photography. Like this camera is one of the best like all around packages and a lot of people uh, have kind of discounted it because of the autofocus issues that Panasonic are known for. Uh, but let's go into some of the pros and the cons, okay? So let's start with the pros, all the reasons you would wanna buy this camera. So pro number one is the ergonomics. Like this camera is one of the most comfortable cameras I've ever held. Uh, I saw a video with one of the Panasonic reps talking about how they designed it, like how many different uh, times they sent it out to, you know, see how the grip felt to different people. Like all the tiny details, like this little indentation and things like that were really taken into consideration when designing this camera. And it really shows because it's really comfortable to use for long periods of time. Uh, I used this camera on a wedding like all day long shooting video uh, and didn't have any kind of discomfort, just handheld. Um, and, you know, speaking about that experience, yeah, I shot the whole wedding handheld because the IBIS on this is so good. It's ridiculously good. Uh, not to mention like the EVF, the EVF on this thing is amazing. And although it's a primarily photo centric camera, this shoots in 4K 60. The menu systems that Panasonic has are probably some of the best. I think Canon's menus aren't bad either, uh, but a lot of camera companies make really bad menus. So I'm a like software person by day. I like write code a lot of the time. Uh, so I like know a little bit about user interface and like some of this stuff, this is like 1999 stuff, especially what I was dealing with on Sony. And then this, like, yeah, the way that I think a lot of camera companies are organizing their menus could be improved, even Panasonic, but at least everything works with the touchscreen, you know, at least everything <laughs> works with it. Like, come on, like, that's awesome. I mean, that shouldn't be something that I have to celebrate at this point. It's 2018, but Panasonic has you covered when you want a good user experience. And when I was shooting a wedding with this, actually, I shot video and I used two batteries. Now, <laughs> I do have several cameras, so it's not like this is the only camera I was shooting with all day, but like a full day of shooting, like eight hours with two batteries is kind of insane. Of course, I, you know, I turn my camera off when I don't need it, you know, different things like that. So your mileage may vary, but the battery life on this, especially considering how good the IBIS is and all those other features, it's amazing. And the image quality for what it is, uh, and we'll get to some of this in the con section, but it's a micro four thirds sensor. And for micro four thirds, this is great. It's awesome. Um, and the autofocus, which is like a big thing of like contention with a lot of people is not that bad. So in stills, if you're doing portraits or anything like that, it's fine. It's fine. It's actually like one of the fastest autofocus systems. And even for shooting video, if you know how to use the autofocus correctly, it's okay for videos like this. So right now I'm using a black magic camera, the pocket cinema camera, not the 4k one. I don't have that one yet, but it's coming <laughs> eventually. Um, yeah. I'm, and that's manual focus. But when I shoot these types of videos, a lot of times, like I think the last one or two have actually been shot on this camera. 
Uh, and if you turn face tracking on and you're in a you know, well-lit area, it can actually track your face just fine. It's perfectly usable. Every once in a while it will miss, so it's not as reliable as like Sony or Canon. All right, so I'm doing a quick vlogging test, right, just to demonstrate for you guys uh, how this works. Uh, as you can see, as I go into a slightly worse lighting situation, it has a tougher time of like grabbing right on my face as the lighting changes. Um, uh, and it also sometimes will not focus right away when I do things like that. You know, put your hand in front of there. Um, uh, but it does a decent job, right, if you're well lit of like focusing on your face, even if you're going back and forth, as long as nothing's happening too quickly with face tracking on. What I found works really well, though, is to turn face tracking on, right, and it tracks your face if you're in good light really well, and any time it drifts, I press the AF on button and I've remapped uh, one of the front buttons to be AF on. So I have a back button autofocus, but I also have this front autofocus too. So now I'm gonna do that thing again, right? Where I put my hand up in front of the camera and, okay, it kind of focused uh, like that time. It was supposed to be. <laughs> I was hoping it wouldn't. Okay, that time it didn't. And then I press the button See here, it doesn't go right back to my face, so I can press the button. Go here, press the button. Anytime it like has trouble, oh wait, I think my hand might just, okay, yeah, there it goes. Anytime it's not being fast enough, uh, because the tracking works on your face pretty well, um, and you can just put a focus point in the center, you can use that front button autofocus uh, it's kind of a workaround if you want to vlog on this camera. Now, it's not the best option. If you want the best vlogging camera possible, you probably will get a Canon, but this is pretty usable, uh, you know, if you have this camera and you happen to want to also vlog. All right, while you guys are here, this completely unbiased review was sponsored by My Lightroom Presets. Okay, check them out. Uh, they come with videos explaining how I made them and how you can like use the techniques that I use uh, in your own photos to make cool effects. Uh, so if you're interested in learning some educational stuff and having presets to slap on your photos to make them look good instantly and or if you just want to support the channel and me making more videos that cost more money, uh, check out my Lightroom presets, okay? Link in the description, info card somewhere. Okay, let's get back to the actual video that you guys came here for. Um, but honestly, for how I shoot, right, a lot of the times, other than when I'm doing this type of stuff, I'm behind the camera and I can manually focus, which is better in a lot of cases, so it's not that big of an issue. Uh, but if you are someone who needs to track fast moving subjects for things like video or things like that, or just like put this on a gimbal and like hope it tracks and stuff like that. Uh, it's not the best. It does not compare to Canon and Sony. I think everyone knows that, but it's actually okay. If you go back on my channel, I had not very nice things to say about the GX85 when I was using that camera and it's autofocus and Panasonic really listened like they improved this is usable I know it's not the best doesn't compete with like any of the Sony stuff doesn't compete with the Canon stuff but it's really not that bad I think people have really blown like the autofocus on these Panasonic like how bad it is out of proportion proportion because it's something that Panasonic is aware of and they're actively working on. Now, do I wish they would incorporate some kind of hybrid system? Yes, I really do because then, you know, there would be no reason <laughs> for me to really be thinking about Sony like that. But I mean, you know, it is what it is. You know, every camera is going to have its pros and cons and the autofocus is the biggest con on this, but it's really not actually that bad. If you learn how to use it, you can use the autofocus in certain situations. As I mentioned earlier, this is using a micro four thirds sensor. So there are certain cons that come along with just that. It's a smaller sensor, so it's not going to perform as well in low light. You know, the IBIS can compensate for that in some situations, but you know, if you need a faster shutter speed, then you're just going to have to, you know, 
lower that f stop as much as you can um and bump the iso up like it is what it is if you're shooting in the dark sometimes it's gonna come out grainy uh but again a lot of times that's not that much of an issue like if you're shooting like video and photo and stuff like that a lot of the times you're lighting stuff so you don't need to use insanely high isos the only people that should be using those really high isos are people who are doing stuff like documentary work things like that and at that point you know you might be wanting to look at a different camera than the g9 anyway but you know really you should be trying to light your stuff if you can anyway uh, so for me, it's not a big issue, but if you do have to shoot in low light and you can't light stuff, again, this might not be the camera for you, like, at all. Uh, another thing that I don't like about this camera, well, not that I don't like it, but uh, I wish Panasonic really would have, you know, included some of the higher data rates uh, for video on this camera. I get that this is a lower priced option than the GH5, and I get that this is supposed to be a photocentric camera, whereas your GH5 is the hybrid, you know, video, photo, like centric camera. Um, but I feel like they already gimped it enough by like, you know, putting a 10 minute cap on the 4K60 and then the 30 minute cap on the regular 4K, which the GH5 doesn't have. As you know, the GH5 and GH5S, those can record uh, unlimited. And they're some of the only uh, cameras in this kind of form factor that do that. Um, so I think, you know, just gimping that would have been enough because one of the things that I have found um, is that I think for 4K60, like I think it's 150 megabits. I'm not sure, don't quote me on this, but I think it does like 150 megabits. For 4K60, we could really use like twice that, like honestly, honestly, like it isn't a huge issue because of the type of stuff that I use it for. And if I need to do something that where I really need a heavy color grade or something like that, I could use like the camera that I'm shooting on now, the pocket cinema camera, and that shoots raw and I can do all types of stuff with that. So for me, it's not a huge deal. But if this was the only camera that you had, like, you know, if this was the only camera that I had, <laughs> I would have wished that like, you know, I could get some higher data rates on this because when you start to do uh, certain things with the colors, it can get kind of freaky. You can like lose detail and stuff like that. Um, and then when you, yeah, it's just not, it's not the best for shooting 4K 60. I really think it can use higher data rates, but it does shoot 4K 60 though. And a lot of other cameras don't shoot 4K 60. Like the only, uh, DSLM type cameras that are doing that now or DSLRs, you have like the 1DX2, you have the Fujifilm X-T3 that just came out, the other Panasonic cameras. And I think that's it. I might be missing stuff. If I missed anything, you know, put it in the comments below. But like, there's not a lot of cameras that do 4K 60. And at least this does this. So, you know, I do like that about this camera. It's just that, you know, at 4K 60, like 150 mega, like, I guess it's fine. But I mean, I feel like we could do a little bit better, like what the GH5 has. I feel like, I don't know, like, then I haven't looked into like the actual specs as in like part by part what's in here. But I feel like it's probably like the same stuff as the GH5. And then they just took away a little, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on any of that. I just feel like they could have done that. If they would have did that, this camera would have been so sweet for me, like so sweet. Okay, so let's talk about some of the cons so that we can, you know, have a little bit of a discussion uh, and see if this is a camera that you really should be getting, right? One of the cons of this camera, of course, is that it has a micro four thirds sensor. Now, a lot of people like to just straight up bash micro four thirds sensors. If you've uh, been on this channel before, you know I've shot all types of stuff, APS-C, full frame, Canon, like all that stuff, right? For me, this is how I look at it, right? Micro Four Thirds is kind of like an aesthetic choice. Just like if you want the shallowest depth of field possible, right, you're probably gonna go full frame. But Micro Four Thirds is actually a very similar uh, size to Super 16 film and Super 16 is like 
the type of film that a lot of my favorite movies were shot on. A lot of indie films and stuff like that uh, use this exact aesthetic. So to say that like you can't use it or that it's not good enough or like oh you you know uh you're not going to be able to get high quality enough video or photo or whatever from micro just because of a sensor size is kind of dumb to me <laughs> it's just like it's just different it doesn't it's not necessarily better or worse it might be better or worse in certain aspects but like let's say you're shooting I don't know sports or something i don't know if a lot of people i don't shoot sports at all but i could imagine you know the extra reach you get from a crop sensor might be useful or something you know it just really depends so what i would say to you is don't just like listen to everyone on youtube as to whether or not uh, a sensor size is good or not like do some research see if you like how the photos or footage looks uh, as compared to other size sensors or like if it even makes a difference to you for the work that you do and then decide if you think that micro four thirds isn't good enough or not because as you know like uh the camera that i'm shooting on now micro four thirds the black magic a pocket cinema 4k that everyone's going crazy over micro four thirds so you know that super 16 and like that range of size has been around for a while and you can definitely do good work on it now super 16 was also <laughs> also had more prevalent grain than like if you shot like a 35 millimeter film which is why you know you get the noise issues you have on micro four thirds as compared to like an a7s with you know a big sensor with huge photo sites sucking in all that light you know, it's, of course, that's going to do better. But this is actually okay. It's not that bad. Like, even right now, right? I'm shooting on a micro four-third sensor with even more of a crop than this. The original pocket camera has, like, a 2.8 crop, like, something insane. And I'm shooting at ISO 800 right now. I'm not even touching 1600 because I have a light. Like, you know, it's like, it's fine. It's really fine in a lot of cases, guys. It really is fine. To me, it's all about just what aesthetic you're going for. And then, you know, again, on the autofocus, it's not as idiot proof as Canon and Sony. Like on Canon and Sony cameras, you pretty much don't really have to do anything. Like you tap the screen every once in a while to set a focus point, and then you just go. It'll like, it just does everything automatically so well. This camera's not like that. You are gonna have to switch focusing modes to compensate for different situations. And there are some situations where it's just not going to do that well. But I do have hope for Panasonic because like I said, when I reviewed that uh, GX85, like there were times when I would point the camera at stuff and the autofocus just refused to function. It just wouldn't autofocus. And I'm sure you guys saw some of that when the GH5 first came out. That was still the case. But they've been doing firmware updates. And even when I first got this camera before the firmware update, like the autofocus was Okay, it never did that thing, at least that I saw on the GH, uh, sorry, on the GX85, uh, where it just wouldn't focus or like it would just straight up take forever. You know, it's not the fastest, it's not the best, but it works and you can use it in some situations. <laughs> but again, if you're someone who's behind the cat, and again, this stuff doesn't apply for photos. For photos, it's fine. Like none of the auto photo, like if you are primarily shooting stills, this camera is like awesome. Don't worry about the autofocus or anything like that. Where I would say this camera's autofocus really, really does the worst is for just tracking, moving subjects, going back and forth, um yeah and if it's moving kind of fast like if you're moving pretty slowly it does a good job but if you start moving around too fast or your subject's moving around too fast tracking doesn't work as well gerald and dunn i think that's how you say his name yeah gerald and dunn did a really cool video explaining all that stuff i'll link to it in the description or something or put like an info card or something or the other on here uh but yeah <laughs> 
uh, you, you know, you can check that out if you want to know more in-depth stuff about the autofocus. I'm not going to talk about that here. Just know that my opinion is it's really fine. It's not that bad. I can use it. And when I can't use it, I just manual focus because I'm behind the camera most of the time. It's not that deep. But, you know, if you're an autofocus heavy person, you know, you might not want to do it. But that being said, for vloggers, like I've vlogged on this and it's actually okay. Will you lose your face every once in a while? But it seems to grab it back. So if you're okay with, you know, drifting, you know, I would say maybe like 10% of the time, then you could consider it because it does have that like flip out screen, which is awesome for vlogging. So that's even a autofocus application where it's probably fine. That 10% of the time where it drifts is, you know, when the light starts getting worse. But if you're vlogging in the daytime, mostly point this at yourself, like you're probably good actually. Yeah. And with the 4k 60, I just feel like, well, I mean, all the video in general, I feel like they could have given us some better data rates like they did in the GH5, you know, just throw us a bone. It's like, I get it. This camera is less expensive. They had to get gimp some stuff, but I felt like the record time limits was enough to like gimp it for professional video shooters. You could have just, you know, let us slide with the, with the higher bit rates, you know, come on, Panasonic firmware update, firmware update, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, so those are my general thoughts on this camera after shooting with it for several months. Uh, I've used it in a lot of different situations, you know, portraits, weddings, like event cover, like all types of stuff. Um, and this camera really holds up. The one thing I will say for this camera, like the ultimate reason to get it is just how easy to use it is and how fun to use it is. It's just like the most, it's fun to hold, like it's very ergonomic. It's a very usable camera. And a lot of times people underestimate like that aspect of things. I'm gonna go on a quick aside right here, right? One of the things that I learned from a YouTuber named Rob Chapman about guitar, because some of you guys may not follow me for this, but I also play guitar. And one of the things... where you like how it looks and you like how it feels because that's gonna make you wanna play it more. And the more you play, the better you get, right? I think the same can be said for cameras. You want a camera that stays out of your way and is very usable. Something that feels good in your hand so that you always wanna pick it up and hold it and shoot and something that's very usable so you never feel frustrated when you're trying to take pictures. That way you're removing more and more barriers from just taking pictures and improving your skill level. And I think for that reason, this camera is awesome. You know, outside of the few situations that I went over in the cons uh, section or whatever of this video. Uh, so overall, it's a really great camera. And I think people should get it. Uh, I think it's discounted right now. I'm not sure if that discount's still going, but even when it's not discounted, like this camera is such a steal for what it does, like 4K 60. 20 frames per second shoot but for whatever reason people aren't getting it because well some because it's micro four thirds um which you know look if you're you're full frame all the way and that's like your aesthetic that you have to have then i completely understand but for some people really you don't even need the full like you know if you really like get into it and you know if you want to actually have a blog post on like what camera you should buy and i think for me like this works for a lot of situations, which is why I'm keeping this camera. I'm gonna use this camera, like I'm gonna use the heck out of it, man. Like this camera's awesome. Like I've been using it. It like my Sony a6300 just kind of sits there. Cause even though the autofocus is better on that, that's pretty much the only thing of me. Cause I know a lot of you guys follow me for my Sony stuff, but like this camera's kind of better. Like other than the autofocus you know, and low light and stuff like that you know, like this camera is awesome. So if you were thinking about getting it, you know, you know, probably just go ahead and get it. Honestly, it's pretty good. <laughs> uh, let me know what you thought. Uh, if you have the camera, let me know if I missed anything, your opinions on it. Um, yeah. And just go ahead and subscribe. Check out some of my other videos. I did a little cinematic with this camera that's up on the channel. I'll probably like put that somewhere info card um, or end screen or something like that. Thank you.